Hello, I am Jessica Sarasi, and I'm a nutrition and dietetics student at Gateway Community College. And we're finally here at the end. Welcome to the wrap up session of our series about nutrition. So today we are going to talk about a balanced plate and what really that means, um, as well as how this involves everything that we've talked about, what the takeaway is from all of the topics that we've brought to you over the last few months. So to begin, I wanna go over some objectives of what we want you to take away from really all of these sessions. So the first is we really want you to be able to recall the importance of fiber, fruit, and vegetables in your diet. Second, we really want you to be able to navigate the MyPlate app that you've just learned about and really use it within your daily routine. Third, we want you to use all of the resources or the ones that you like the most that we've offered to you and help guide you in living high, uh, healthier lives with those resources, resources. And lastly, we want you to be able to read and understand the food label at your local grocery store to make health conscious decisions on your own when we're no longer doing these sessions. Um, because that was the whole point of all of these sessions was really to be able to give you these resources and tools to help you make these, these decisions on your own in the future. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about the balanced plate and what exactly that means. So balance, variety, and adequacy. So let's talk about what each of those words mean in nutrition terms. So again, there's power in plants. That's kind of the revolving theme of all of these series and topics that we've given to you. So first, balance. So fruits, vegetables, protein, and grains have a lot of nutrients. So it's really important to make sure that you're meeting your nutrient needs um, you know, with all of these foods, but not just concentrating on just one or two. Because if you just concentrate on one or two, let's say you're only eating vegetables and protein all the time, you're more than likely going to be missing out on other nutrients that come from a variety of different foods. So you want to make sure that you're getting enough balance out of your meals. Now we'll talk about variety. So you want to be eating different foods from day to day. So it's really easy to rely on those same foods, the ones that you're comfortable with all the time, um, but when you do this, when you rely on only certain foods, you'll get into a rut, which is, you know, you're stuck. You don't want, you don't want to try new things. You might be hesitant to try new things. Um, but even if you're eating the same healthy foods, you might be missing out on important vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and phytochemicals that are in other foods. So we want to make sure that there's a balance of fruit, vegetable, protein, and grains on your plate but also that there is a variety of foods from those food groups on your plate. And last is adequacy. So a diet does not always provide the right balance of nutrients. You may be getting one more than the other. So aside from diet, we wanna make sure that we're focusing on making a lifestyle change that is sustainable, like eating more plants. Um, making these soft, small goals for yourself will help you achieve your goals more efficiently. So you're focusing your energy on small goals like eating more plants. And once you've conquered that goal, you can move on to something else that makes your uh, nutrition and your lifestyle even more healthier. So starting with plants, adding in more plant foods will be a, a really great start into adding more nutrition into your lifestyle. So let's talk about, again, what we've kind of drilled into you guys this entire time, which is that importance of fruits, vegetables, and grains. So we have already discussed in the previous presentations each individual food group. We've discussed variety and variation and how it's so important in a healthy lifestyle because each of these food groups gives us its own nutritional benefits 
Fruits have their own benefits. Grains have their own benefits. Vegetables and protein and dairy and dairy alternatives and water, they all have their own um, nutritional benefits and they all deserve a place in our, on our plate. Um, so let's refresh our memory on these individual importances. So for fruit, um, it is recommended again that we get about one to two cups of fruit a day. They're a great source in general, all fruits for the most part, have a great source of potassium, fiber of course, vitamin C and folic acid, which is really lacking in a lot of our diets is that folic acid, especially that fiber too. Also having that higher potassium in your diet, that higher fiber, it's gonna reduce cholesterol levels and that also lowers the risk of heart disease because we know that cholesterol, high cholesterol and saturated fats will lead to heart disease. Also, also, the potassium in our fruits help reduce the blood pressure because we're kind of lowering that salt intake and we're increasing that potassium intake. Vegetables. So this was a pretty lengthy presentation before because we talked about starchy vegetables and non-starchy vegetables, which are both great. Um, and they all have a purpose on our plate. So it's recommended that we get one to three cups of vegetables each day on our diet. Um, vegetables are packed with vitamins, minerals, and there's two types of vegetables. We have starchy and the non-starchy. So we'll go into starchy very quickly. So starchy vegetables are very, very good for you. They usually contain more calories, which is not something to worry about, and carbohydrates. So really when we're looking at carbohydrates, if somebody has diabetes, you know, type two diabetes, we wanna make sure we might be carb counting to make sure that we're not going over on carbohydrates because some of these starchy vegetables are pretty high. So we wanna take a step back and look at how many of these we are eating um, opposed to non-starchy vegetables. So foods that are not, are starchy, excuse me, include sweet potatoes, potatoes, corn, pumpkin, butternut squash, and all the squashes. So again, great source of uh, vitamins, minerals, fiber, potassium in our diet, and they are more energy dense. Um, so, you know, they have more of those calories. And non-starchy vegetables, just as good. So those are all of your green vegetables. They're low in calories, high in potassium, high in fiber, high in folic acid, vitamin C, and vitamin A. Um, these foods might look like spinach, lettuce, zucchini, um, cucumber, broccoli, green beans, we, you know, we have um, uh, veg, uh, peppers and um, you know, cauliflower, cabbage, things like that. They also help with bowel function, one, because of all that fiber. And vitamin C, of course, is great in our diet. You see a lot of vitamin C in those orange and red fruits and vegetables. Um, and vitamin C helps in iron absorption, which iron, again, it's one of those uh, minerals that we are sorely lacking um, as a nation. We're really low in iron and eating more vitamin C with iron rich foods will help absorb that iron. Let's talk about grains. So we learned a lot about grains. It was pretty early on in our sessions, but we wanna see about three to eight ounces of grains consumed a day. Um, again, depending on your own physical activity that day. And out of those grains, at least half of the grains should be whole grains. They do co contain a lot of carbohydrates, it's a grain, but carbs are our brain and our body's main source of energy. So we want to make sure we're getting it from the right sources, which is why we ask for the half of the plate being, or half of the grains being whole grain in its most natural source where it contains all of those fiber, uh, uh, fiber molecules um, is going to keep us going as well as all of the other vitamins and minerals in there. So some of those of B vitamins that are essential would be vitamin B1, vitamin B2, vitamin B3, and folate. So this is what a whole grain is. A whole grain has the entire kernel that's grown from it. It has everything in the kernel that you need. So no nutrients are lost if you're eating a whole grain item. Um, so you might see things in the grocery store that say whole wheat flour, 
oats are a whole grain, whole cornmeal, brown rice is a whole grain. Um, and you can also look at the back of your, the labels of some of these products when you're grocery shopping. It'll tell you if it's a whole grain, it'll tell you if it's made from whole wheat rather than uh, just white wheat, white uh, flour. Um, also whole grains are fiber rich. And again, fiber we know promotes healthy bowel movements. It keeps things moving in your gut. Refined grains. So this is what we wanna, you know, not steer clear of, but watch out for and be aware of. So refined grains have been processed and they've been milled. So that process that it goes through, it removes really all the nutrients, which is what we want. Um, but what it leaves us is a fluffy white bread, which is, you know, what we see a lot of the times on the shelves. Tastes good, you know, it's fluffy, it's easy to chew, um, but it does lack those nutrients that we need. So sometimes you'll see on a food label the word enriched, um, which means that they have put some of those nutrients back. Um, some things that are almost impossible to add back is that fiber. Um, so sometimes you will see some of the B vitamins brought back in, but the fiber is usually lacking as well. It's hard, once you strip that fiber out, it's hard to get that back in. So things that you might see in the grocery store that are refined would be white pasta, white rice, white bread, and white flour. And this is a nice little diagram to show, diagram to show you the difference here. The left is a kernel of a whole grain in its most natural source. And then we have on the right, the white grain, which is part of the whole grain, but we've stripped it of everything else that's good about it, um, leaving it only with what is called the endosperm. All right, let's move on to protein. We all love protein, we hear a lot about protein, but it's just one of the many, many other nutrients we need in our diet. So um, it's recommended that we only get about two to six and a half ounces of protein a day. Um, three ounces is about the size of the palm of your hand, so to kind of give you a reference. On average, people um, usually have between well, over, quite over um, 10 or so grams of protein a day. And overeating protein, um, I mean, there's the benefits and there's obviously the downsides to that. Protein is usually stored as fat. Um, it doesn't happen every single time, but overeating protein, it benefits, protein benefits you, but overconsumption, it really isn't benefiting you. Um, one ounce of meat is equivalent to about a quarter cup of beans, one egg, one tablespoon of peanut butter, or half an ounce of uh, oh, uh, so half an ounce of nuts. So, if you decide to replace one ounce of meat, so about a third of your palm of your hand, you can replace that with black beans, you know, or an egg, or a nut butter like peanut butter or almond butter or half an ounce of nuts. If you like almonds or peanuts or pistachios or whatever you like, uh, walnuts, replacing that um, will also be equivalent to that protein need. So some meat is high in fat, which is what we're trying to avoid, which raises that bad cholesterol and lowers the good cholesterol. So again, power in plants is what we're focusing on. So lowering your meat consumption is something that um, has been studied for years and years. Um, it has been proven to show that uh, lowering your red meat intake as well as processed meat intake lowers the risk of you developing um, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and lowers your risk of heart disease. So uh, another alternative aside from um, plants would be to possibly add some seafood into your diet um, for those omega-3 fatty acids um, because they are essential in our diet and seafood does have less saturated fat than meat. Um, and also protein contains a lot of B vitamins, iron, zinc, and magnesium. But you can get your protein from a lot of things. You could also have tofu, which is a complete protein. It's made out of soy. So there's a lot of options for plant-based proteins. All right, dairy. So dairy and dairy alternatives. So um, dairy meaning coming from a cow and dairy alternatives mean coming from plants, plant sources like almond, oat, hemp milk, rice milk, coconut milk soy milk. But really when we're trying to find um, in somewhat equivalent um, 
uh, somewhat equivalent option for dairy um, other than dairy. We want to look for complete proteins that are a little bit higher in fat as well. So maybe a soy milk or an oat milk or a pea milk. Um, those are usually higher in protein, which is what we want out of a dairy product. So it's recommended that if you're getting it from dairy or from, you know, a nut milk, you want to have about two to three cups of dairy a day. Dairy is naturally rich in potassium, calcium, vitamin D, and protein. Um, if you're getting a dairy alternative, usually this is fortified. So fortified means they'll put some of these vitamins and minerals in your milk. But what we're also seeing on the shelves is that dairy from, from cows, they're also fortifying dairy milk now to make sure we're getting more vitamin D, more calcium, more potassium. Um, because again, vitamin D and calcium is something that's very much lacking in our diets right now as Americans. Um, when you're going for dairy, you will wanna look for low fat um, or fat-free milk um, if you're an adult, um, just because uh, you don't wanna add all that saturated fat in. If you're looking for plant milks, a lot of them don't have, they're not very high in fat at all. Um, so that's a benefit. Um, dairy and non-dairy alternatives. They provide many nutrients like phosphorus, a, vitamin A, zinc, choline, selenium, um, and dairy alternatives. Again, they're usually fortified with this. Oils. We love to cook with oils, at least in my house. I'm sure you have as well. So oils come up from a variety of plants and fish sources. But when we want to choose an oil to cook with or bake with, we want to choose oils that are really high or relatively high in the good fats, which we call unsaturated fats. So that might be olive oil, canola oil, corn oil, soybean oil, coconut oil, and sunflower oil. So out of all of those oils, canola oil is actually the highest in unsaturated fat. So that might be something that you choose. Olive oil is another great option. Um, they are high in fat, but they're high in good fats. They do have saturated fat though, but it is overpowered with that with the unsaturated fats that they have. All right, so let's just brief a little bit about the food label. Uh, this is one of my favorite topics because I feel like you're it's very hands on where you're able to go to a grocery store and recognize this label. Um, and we want to make sure you know how to navigate this to the best of your ability when you're on your own and grocery shopping like we do every week. So on the right side here is an example of a nutrition facts label. So when we're looking at this label, there's a lot of things in bold and we want to look at those things in bold. It doesn't mean that the things that are not in bold are unimportant. They are very important, but the, um, the words that are in bold are kind of categories on the nutrition facts label. So we're gonna go through each category. So first, nutrition facts. It's nice and bold at the top. Below that, you'll see serving size. So this is how much you should be eating a portion of, of this product when you're eating it. So for this particular label, um, it escapes me on what I chose here. I think I just got a picture off of Google. Um, but the serving size of this product is two thirds of a cup, okay? So below that, we have the calorie count, which they have very large, a very large print there. So the calorie count of this product is 230 calories. Now, when you see that, it doesn't mean that's the amount of calories in the entire box. It means that when you eat the serving size, which is two thirds of a cup, you're going to be consuming 230 calories. Um, every product that has a food label, it's gonna be different calories and different serving sizes. So this one in particular, you know that when you're eating the portion size that it gives you, you're gonna be consuming 230 calories. Now, below that, we have fat in bold. But also on the right side, we have something that's called percent daily value. So Everything on the right, all of those numbers that are listed on the right, that is the amount of fat or cholesterol, whatever it's next to, that's the amount you're getting out of those calories. So 
out of the 230 calories, 10% um, of that is your total fat for the day. Um, so this project is giving you 10% of your total fat for the day. Um, so, you know, this is based on a 2000 calorie diet, which is pretty general. Everyone's calorie needs are different. So the USDA, they're putting 2000 calories as a general need for a person, but it definitely varies. So based on a 2000 calorie diet, this product is uh, using up 10% of your calories uh, for fat. Uh, so this is 10% of your fat for the day. Now below that, something that we talked about a lot is the saturated fat. So this has one gram, which is relatively low. Um, and then below that we have cholesterol, which is something we wanna look into. Plants don't contain any uh, cholesterol. So really cholesterol you'll see in foods that have dairy or any sort of animal products. Below that is sodium. So in this product, in this serving size, 7% of your sodium is being used when you eat a portion of this product. Below that is carbohydrates. So we like car carbohydrates here in nutrition. It's very beneficial to you. You should never eliminate carbs from your diet. Um, this particular product, when you eat the two thirds of a cup of it, it's, um, it's, it's using 13% of your daily need for carbs, or it's providing, providing your 13% of carbs for the day. And carbs are made up of sugars. That's what carbohydrates are. But something we need to watch out for is those added sugars. So you can see here when it says total carbohydrate, next to it says 39 grams, okay? So if we kind of look down a few lines, it says that there's 10 grams of added sugar. So out of those 37 grams, 10 of those grams are added sugar. And that added sugar is 20% of your daily value. Just by eating this one serving of this product, you're getting 20% of your, of your daily value of, of added sugar. So just something to be you know, aware of is that added sugar content. We don't wanna overdo it with added sugar. Natural sugars are okay if you're not someone who's diabetic and counting your carbohydrates, but added sugar being quite literally added sugar, you know, added artificial sweeteners and also added um, cane sugar and things like that. Protein. Um, protein we talked about in our food groups. Um, protein is, is obviously essential. This one provides three grams of protein. And below that, you'll see some vitamins and minerals that are in there in some way, either in high amounts or low amounts. So it's very important to see what um, vitamins and minerals you're getting out of many things that you're eating. This one, this product in particular is pretty high in calcium and iron, which is great. So again, a few things to be aware of, which I, I did touch upon. We wanna make sure we're staying below 7% uh, for your saturated fat, which this product is under 5%. Uh, your added sugar content, we have to be wary of that. It's in a lot of processed foods. Trans fat, um, it's pretty, pretty uh, notably worse uh, for cardiovascular health. It increases the risk of developing heart disease. So this product doesn't have any. Many things don't have trans fat anymore. What you want to be aware of is when you're buying baked goods in the bakery of your grocery store. Many of those have trans fats and it may not tell you. Sodium. We don't want to be exceeding about 2300 milligrams a day. So on this label specifically, it only has 160 milligrams. So it's only accounting for 7% of your daily needs, which is pretty good. But you'll find a lot of high sodium in uh, processed foods. All right, let's take a breath. We're, we're coming up to the end here. So um, first and foremost, um, before we get to the last slide, you have all been such a brilliant audience and it's really been a pleasure and speaking from all of us, um, hearing your questions and involvement during these presentations. And we really hope that you learned a lot and tried some of the recipes that we've provided and continue to make nutrition a priority in your life. And with that said, just a wrap up of some of those resources that we did provide to you all. 
and that are in those handouts that we created for you all. One is Healthy Sense. Um, Healthy Sense is a great resource for teaching people how to save money to purchase healthy foods. Um, this website gives you shopping tips on how to purchase fruits and vegetables and healthy snacks, and it gives you tips on developing that budget so you stay focused when you're in the grocery store. All right, and Budget Bites, another great resource. It's a website that gives you tons of recipes to choose from so that you can decide on what you want to make one night and plan your meals throughout the week. They have vegetarian options, vegan options, and more, and they are relatively low in cost, so they range from a dollar per meal up to seven dollars per meal. And lastly, something that you recently learned about, and that was the My Plate app. I downloaded it myself. It's very easy to follow. I feel like it's very user-friendly. If you have a smartphone, I would highly suggest that you download it because it does have tons of resources in the app at your disposal at any time. And you can log in at any moment and see some goals that you can set for yourself. Um, there's no calorie counting. It's not gonna um, you know, ding on your phone if you miss, uh, you know, if you miss the day, but it will um, tell you, it will update you on some things you should be adding to your day throughout the day. You know, it'll check in with you and, and ask you if you've had a serving of vegetables today. Little gentle reminders, which I really like about the app. So overall, um, eating healthy can be absolutely done on a budget. Try using the MyPlay app to track your goals for fruit, fiber, um, vegetables, protein, and any other uh, foods that you want to track. Um, I would definitely suggest visiting your local farmer's market for fresh fruits, fruits and vegetables. It's something you can do year round, which is amazing. And you can find more inexpensive recipes on eatright.org. And all of these resources um, have been mentioned to you in previous presentations. And you have all of these resources at your disposal in those worksheets provided. So thank you so much again. It has been an absolute pleasure. Um, and, you know, continue learning, continue being curious about nutrition. Thank you so much.